Hello and welcome to GitOpsCon North America 2021. I'm Uma Mukara, maintainer of Litmus Chaos CNCF project and I'm also the CEO at Chaos Native. In this session, the goal is to talk about the role of GitOps in chaos engineering and how we can use GitOps to scale the chaos engineering itself in production or tech production. In general, the idea of GitOps is to do a set of operations whenever there's a change to an application. Right? You do some set of IT operations. You can use the same principles to extend whatever you're doing to do the validation testing of your change as well. And uh, you can do chaos engineering whenever there's an application change on your existing deployments. That's the idea of extending GitOps to do some validation testing, uh, more importantly, chaos testing, so that you retain the reliability of your system whenever there is a change, or you may even improve the reliability whenever there's a change to your application or to the service. That's the idea of your change anyways. Right. So before we go into how we apply GitOps to chaos engineering, let's understand a bit about what chaos engineering is. Uncertainty is definitely related to reliability. So chaos engineering is helping in improving your reliability or reducing the uncertainty. It's, it's really about if there is a fault, is there uncertainty about the service being continuously available? If it does, if it continues to available, then there is no uncertainty and it is reliable. So the faults do happen because of many reasons in various dependent components. So your end service really depends on a lot of other things and a fault anywhere can cause uncertainty to your service. So if the uncertainty increases, your reliability reduces. If you need to increase the reliability, you need to reduce the uncertainty. That means your system has to stay up against a lot of potential failure, right? So it's really about increasing your chances of uptime against certain potential and uh, use chaos engineering to willfully inject these failures and keep correcting them. So that's chaos engineering. So in summary, why will you invest in chaos engineering is to reduce the failures or increase the time between the failures and uh, to decrease the recovery time or MTTR, mean time to recover. Also, to reduce the mean time to identify or mean time to inject a failure. So in practice, what you realize is reduction of MTTI to begin with, and the more capability you have to quickly inject the fault, you will be able to do something about recovery rates. Right? So you increase uh, your automated scripts or do something new to recover uh, the system quick because you're able to uh, recreate the fault very very quickly and at will and uh, as you keep fixing more bugs uh, because of this uh, uh, faults inducing uh, downtimes you will be able to uh, increase the time between the failures or increase the uptime that is MTTF. So this is the end goal uh, to reduce the failures or increase the uptime. Chaos engineering has been there for quite some time, but now why is it more important in the era of cloud native DevOps? So it's primarily because your code is shipping faster, maybe 10 times faster, and uh, there are many more components to deal with. Containerization is leading to proliferation of microservices. So together you are getting more dynamism into your DevOps, maybe 100 times more dynamism sometimes, and that really increases the chance of some fault happening elsewhere and you becoming a victim of that fault. So the burden is to make sure that your service is up and running or uptime continues to be 
uh, higher, right? So there is more complexity in handling the situation of service uptime. Other way of saying this is your, even though your application is small, the uptime of your service depends on 90% of the time on other components. So you have to be worried about fault scenarios in 90% of the components that are not owned by you. So that really increases the dynamic complexity of how you can keep your uptime high or reliability high. Right? Chaos engineering is being used uh, as a way to deal with this uh, complex situation and definitely it is on the rise for the last couple of years. Um, it is uh, definitely going to be uh, more active uh, sometime in the near future you will see chaos engineering becoming a more common practice. So in the chasm circle, we are somewhere between uh, innovators and early adopters. So in about a year or two, you should see the early majority becoming a reality. So chaos engineering is a solution for reliability, not just for ops, but also for QA and developers. So the whole idea is you increase uh, the chances of your uptime by giving shocks uh, wherever there is a possibility. Shock of uh, bringing down a dependent component or a resource within your application. Right? And also the, one of the reasons for this uh, adoption is there are more tools available uh, for doing chaos engineering in a cloud native way, more easier way, there are more experiments available. Uh, you can get started with chaos engineering super quick. Right? So you can do chaos engineering by simply picking up a tool, putting the experiments together. Sometimes even the workflows are also available uh, for validating um, your service against a failure of a complex systems such as Kubernetes. Right? And uh, you will continue to validate the hypothesis of your uh, system against such failures and uh, you find issues and then improve reliability. Let me introduce uh, one such tool to do easy chaos engineering in cloud native. That is Litmus. Uh, I'm a maintainer of Litmus. We've been developing this uh, project for four years, uh, almost four years now. And uh, it's, in, uh, it's got a great community of users around it, contributors around it. Uh, there are about uh, thousand plus possible users who are using Litmus in some form and uh, it's achieved uh, quite a bit of stability recently the project uh, has uh, achieved 2.0 uh, GA uh, that really tells that there is a lot of uh, usage validation and feedback that is put back into the project and uh, it is a CNCF sandbox project on its way to get incubation status uh, sometime in the near future. So let's see a little bit more detail about what Litmus is. So with Litmus, you install it using Helm. You get Chaos Center. It's a central place where you coordinate or collaborate the development of Chaos workflows, which are nothing but uh, a set of experiments put together to be executed uh, in certain fashion. So your team members uh, need not be about uh, ops team, it can also be about QA developer team. All of your DevOps uh, personnel can interact together uh, in the development of chaos experiments, development of chaos workflows and put them in chaos hubs and finally you can use them against various different targets. It could be, it need not be just about Kubernetes targets, it could be about bare metal, physical uh, resources or any other cloud platform such as AWS, Azure, um, GCP and uh, you can also target uh, virtual uh, machine resources such as VMware resources. So Litmus is end-to-end -end, um, capable in helping you practice chaos engineering and uh, it is uh, developed to be used by teams. Uh, it is uh, developed 
to be scalable to do some uh, real world chaos engineering uh, at scale in production. Where do you typically use litmus and what are some of the use cases? As I said, there are some experiments that are already available for various resources such as uh, Kubernetes and its platform, VMware and all other cloud platforms. And uh, you use these experiments to create uh, litmus workflows and you put a steady state hypothesis validation uh, scenario using litmus probes. This is one of a powerful feature uh, that you get in litmus to declaratively identify a hypothesis around steady state which is really important in chaos engineering. Introducing fault is one thing, but being able to say that the fault has resulted in a failure of expected uh, steady state or not, that is, that validation is uh, pretty important in chaos engineering. So we have developed litmus probes to be able to declaratively manage this hypothesis. And it, as far as the use case is concerned, once this litmus workflows are created, you can use them uh, either to do uh, SLO management or you can use them in QA for doing continuous chaos testing or you can start um, game days quickly to introduce chaos culture into your organization or even to enable your uh, some efficiency in your observability systems. Right, against failures, are you able to identify um, the required uh, stuff on your observability dashboards? Right, that uh, validation can be done using chaos engineering, and uh, again, uh, you can also use chaos engineering in your performance testing setups or scaled testing setups as well. How do you use uh, chaos engineering in general in your organization or in your DevOps is uh, first by introducing chaos itself. Uh, there is a lot of um, uh, inertia that you can expect when you introduce chaos engineering in your org, uh, primarily because the system will be going down initially much more than what it is because you are doing willful fault injection but you start by injecting in some minimum form using game days or some experimental sessions in your QA in your pre-prod uh, that's that's the first step second step is uh, you start actually developing some meaningful chaos experiments related to your services and put them into QA or pre-production and uh, once you achieve that, you will start uh, realizing the uh, value that you are achieving uh, or the returns are going to be much higher uh, if you automate, right? So once you find a way to introduce a fault, you continue to automate and put them in your QA cycles, pipelines and pre-production upgrades uh, scenarios or scripts, right? And finally, it is time to take it uh, to a scalable situation where you actually uh, do chaos testing as an extension to your uh, regular software updates. Right? Whenever there's a software change, you also execute some chaos tests uh, sometime uh, in the near uh, timeline of the update, software update itself, uh, in a random way. And uh, you can do this in pre-production uh, or in production also. So the final stage of chaos uh, maturity model is you have a system where you are doing chaos testing whenever there's a change introduced and validating if there is a degradation in reliability or at least maintaining the same level of reliability, if not uh, improved reliability. So GitOps will become very, very important as you start using chaos engineering at scale or in production. It has to be guaranteed that that's the last level of maturity. Somebody should know that whenever I introduce a change, um, there is going to be a fault testing in pre-prod or prod for sure uh, and it's going to be random. It could be within a week, within a day or few hours. We don't know when the fault is going to be injected, but definitely it's going to be injected. Whenever the app change is introduced, it gets deployed uh, through GitOps and you use the same GitOps concept 
to also pull in the chaos test uh, on top of um, your application update. So you're guaranteeing there is going to be chaos testing after your change is pushed into production. So that's a definite way of um, telling your team that there is going to be chaos testing and there is somebody that is going to look at um, the reliability benchmarks after the changes are pushed into production. How do you pull a chaos experiment on top of an application change that is rolled out, right? So there are two parts to it. Um, one is about how your chaos experiments are being managed by your DevOps teams and uh, they're generally uh, put in um, in a Git repository and uh, your team is going to make some updates to the chaos experiments and whenever there is a, a change to the chaos experiments or execution of that you can actually see them in the UI tools so that is uh, one side of the story the other side is that whenever there is a change to the app manifest it gets deployed and that actually is registered as an event um, in the view of uh, the chaos application here uh, for example litmus and uh, once that event is triggered you start um, another cycle of GitOps where you go and pull in a chaos experiment from your Git repository and you execute and send the results back to your chaos center or chaos portal. You call them as uh, front-end GitOps where you are managing a single source of truth for your chaos experiments while uh, either teams are doing through your regular uh, Git type of version changes or you're using some UI tools like Litmus Chaos Center uh, to manage your chaos experiments. So you're using Git for your configuration changes management and the chaos GitOps or the backend GitOps is you are triggering a chaos experiment or workflow execution on, uh, on deploying a change to your application or system. So this is uh, how um, GitOps in chaos engineering gets used. Let's do a couple of quick demos. In the first demo, we will try to attach Git as the backend for Litmus and Chaos Center, which really means that we are going to configure a GitHub repository is a configuration database. We will try to execute some chaos workflow and uh, the details of which will be returned to the backend GitHub. In the second demo, uh, which is to show that the chaos workflows can be executed based on an event or to a deployment or uh, to the system in the backend, right? So this event uh, can be introduced uh, through GitOps. That's how generally it is done. Um, configuration updates are uh, rolled out through GitOps uh, onto Kubernetes systems. And in our demo, we are going to introduce a manual change to a deployment, uh, which otherwise would be done by GitOps. And when we do the change to the deployment, you will see a Litmus Chaos workflow will start um, executing. So that's the objective of uh, these two quick demos. So let's get to it. This is Litmus Chaos Center. Our objective is to create a Git hub based backend for the configuration store. And this is how it's deployed. It's all running and good. And uh, the backend store is right now by default MongoDB and you see some event tracker as well that's used for backend GitOps. And uh, we have one agent that is connected. So the Slitmus Center looks all healthy. Let's go and uh, do some deploy keys to GitHub. So this is where you do in settings. Uh, we need to go and do a git repository connection. So this is the deploy key and we need a git URL and a deploy key. 
so we have a demo repository that is needed where we need to um, do the deployment of these keys so let's create one and this is a private repo and we can initiate uh, this initialize this repository with a readme file uh, at least one file needs to be there in this repository so the repository is created you just need to copy the deploy key and add it to the deploy key of github repo and the deploy key copy and paste give the right access to it let's give a title now the deploy key is acted and hopefully we have <coughs> the right access just need to copy that uh, newly created github repo where we have added the deploy key put in the details and connect now we should have the right access to that backend repository and uh, litmus chaos center is now uh, configured to write the workflow details and by default whenever you configure um, this uh, deploy key based uh, configuration we write some metadata onto it now if i run um, a workflow you should see the workflow details uh, getting written to the git uh, hub repo so that's the front end GitOps. so let's schedule new workflow so we're going to create a workflow to delete an nginx pod and uh, this is how the workflow scheduler of litmus chaos center looks like we're going to go by most of um, the default actions here So let's pick up uh, a pod delete experiment from Litmus Chaos Hub. It's already configured and we just need to tune it for right namespace and right duration and uh, set up some resiliency scores if needed we are just going to ignore that we're going to schedule it now so what this does is uh, it is going to schedule litmus workflow and it should write the configuration to get it's running it's all good and uh, the workflow started engine export delete experiment will run and uh, if you see just now we added this so now anybody can go and uh, make a change to it um, this uh, experiment or workflow details those details will be available um, those changes will be seen at uh, the chaos center as well Now let's look at the second demo uh, of backend GitOps, which is uh, based on an event tracker deployment of uh, Litmus Chaos. So event tracker listens to certain event tracker policies and based on any change, uh, it uh, triggers a policy. So looks like uh, event tracker is looking uh, good um, it's listening so we just need to create uh, certain policies and let's look at uh, how the policies look like so this is a, a kind event tracker policy it's based on um, the conditions and key value operator so let's look at uh, the policy that uh, we have here 
So we have a policy that is related to Nginx deployment itself. The replica is one. That's one replica. Any changes to replica or any change to the deployment itself. Any change to the deployment will trigger the workflow, uh, Litmus workflow. So in this case, uh, we also have to annotate the deployment with uh, certain keys so that uh, only when there is annotation, uh, this uh, event tracker policies will apply. So we need to have uh, two annotations. Let's do them. So GitOps equal to true. It's annotated. So we need to annotate with a particular workflow ID. This is the one whenever there is a change or even triggered. This is the workflow ID that gets run. So we need to copy and paste that. Workflow equal to that. Agent namespace. So our application is now set up to run against a policy, to run uh, a chaos workflow against a given event tracker policy. Now we can just go ahead and change the Nginx deployment. It can be anything. So it can be as simple as uh, adding a label to the deployment. So let's add a litmus label here. This should trigger a change to the state of deployment. Then that should trigger. Let's see if we can run. We go and save it. This changed the deployment. And now the event tracker found it, but we also need to create a event tracker policy. We are not even applied that. So now the policy is set up, annotation is set up. Let's go and add one more label to change the deployment state. So new owner. Litmus. Now we have a policy and annotation. It should pick up. The policy should kick in and uh, the workflow should run. Let's go and look at There you go. So a new workflow is now run because of a change in the deployment of the application. The same Nginx pod delete workflow has been run through a triggering of an event. So that's our backend GitOps demo. I'd like to summarize this session by saying you can adopt GitOps for chaos engineering uh, to automatically run workflows and also to uh, consider Git as a backend for your configuration store of uh, your chaos database. And uh, it's always good to have a guarantee of random fault injection whenever there is a change to your uh, deployments or applications are being rolled out. And Litmus Chaos is uh, one such tool that has a native integration of GitOps. So with that, I would like to thank you and uh, you would be able to get more resources about Litmus and GitOps at our docs. You can join us on uh, the Litmus channel on Kubernetes Slack. Thank you, and you can reach me at my Twitter handle, Uma underscore Mukra. Thank you, have a great GitOps con as well as KubeCon folks.